we're going to talk about evaluating resources. So as you collect your sources of information, you need to evaluate the uh, quality of the provider of the information as well as its usefulness toward your research. Now, this is usually something people do without even thinking about, at least the second half. Is it useful for your research? When we look at a list of book titles or article titles, immediately you read the titles and you think, yes, no, yes, no, is this going to help me? I mean, that's an evaluation of the material and you're doing it almost instinctively, instinctively, automatically without even thinking. But it's evaluating the quality of the provider of the information that is th is trickier and that's where we have to think about it and we have to make a little bit more of an educated guess and we have to you know look for some clues to see what will be useful now who decides what kind of how what the quality of the information is uh, you are ultimately responsible but when it comes to different source types for example books uh, things that we own in our library, reference books, books, you have a l maybe a little bit less responsibility for evaluating those materials because oh, one of our librarians has selected that material, maybe read some book reviews by other no, quality control people, uh, you know, other people who are knowledgeable. And so those items don't just show up in our library randomly. We've done some sort of you know, at least mild evaluation. So you know that these aren't completely off the beaten path you know you, you don't need to worry too much but you still have to apply all the evaluation criteria to the books just to make sure you're really getting what you need then when it comes to periodicals magazines newspapers journal articles this is going to take a little more close viewing yes it's in, it's important to um, recognize the difference between a scholarly writing or trade journalism uh, we're going to talk about that, uh, different types of, of periodicals. And, and even though we've selected something for our library, we selected maybe a journal or magazine in the sense that we typically want the, you know, the quality of the information is typically good. But each issue can, can vary a little bit. Some of it can be better than others, better written, um, better researched, all that. So, so when it comes to periodical articles, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be more uh, critical of that. You're going to have to be more concerned. And then when it comes to internet sources, this is where your most critical evaluation is going to apply. Um, usually, typically, there is absolutely no filter between what someone writes or publishes on the internet and what you see on your computer screen. Someone doesn't write a website and then send it to an editor who checks the quality and then they send it to a review board or anything along those lines. These are, these are going to be things that you have to think of. You're going to have to be that critical thinker, that critical reviewer. And so this is, there are some things published on the internet that have been through a review process, but n not everything, and it's not that common. So you really have to be that person. You have to be that reviewer. So it's important to evaluate your resources as you go along. So what type of source are you looking at? We're going to need to know what kinds of sources. You need you need to look at the different types of sources that are out there and you need to understand the differences. Primary and secondary sources. So that's the first thing you want to look at. What is the difference between a primary source and a secondary source? A primary source. This is an actual account of events, um, a diary, a journal, like somebody's been keeping track of an event in a journal, uh, sort of like a diary. Uh, research experiment, somebody who actually performed an experiment, they did the research, they're telling you about it, what they did. Something written by a person, if you're researching an author, something that was written by Maya Angelou is, is the first, you know, primary account of her thoughts, uh, that kind of thing. The definition from Oxford English Dictionary, primary, occurring or existing first in a sequence of events belonging to the beginning or earliest stages of something, first in time. So this is the first account of things, something that's primary, primary source. Historical documents are great, the uh, original documentation of something, primary sources. So what would be a secondary source then? This is going to be a discussion of a primary source, an analysis, a 
critique, a commentary about something, something written about someone. So if I write something about Maya Angelou, then that's a secondary source about her. What she's written about herself, that's first account. That's a primary source. But what I'm writing is a secondary source. Um, if you read something in the newspaper about a study that happened, the newspaper isn't the primary source about that study. They're reporting news about something else that happened. So they're a secondary source. So you you know you need to think: Do I need a primary source or a secondary source? And then popular and scholarly sources need to know the difference between those two as well. Popular sources. General audiences, things that are less technical, the language is not as technical, it's, um, the explanations are more written for general readers, newspaper is a popular source, uh, things that are expected to be accessed by a lot of readers. You, don't, you aren't expected to have any expertise in the area. Something like Time Magazine, Newsweek, Psychology Today, these are popular sources. These are meant to be accessible to many, many people, whether or not you know anything about a topic. On the other hand, then, are scholarly sources. These are going to be your scholarly journals. Maybe your instructor will say, I want you to use a scholarly journal for this, or a scholarly source. Or they might say they want you to use a peer-reviewed source. Maybe peer-reviewed, blind-reviewed, refereed. Those are different ways of sort of getting at the same idea. Um, scholarly sources are in-depth accounts. They're much more thorough. These are going to be studies, experiments, surveys, things that are about the actual research that was done. So let's talk a minute about the peer review process. When an article is written and submit to a scholarly journal, it's probably written by a researcher, and they submit it, and then it goes through a peer review process. And what the journal does when they get that, rather than just reading it and saying, hey, this seems really interesting, I bet we're going to sell a lot of issues if we publish this, what they're going to be doing is they're going to send it out to other people in the same field of study. So if you're a biologist and you submit a biology article, you're going to, um, they'll send it to other people in, in that same field, in that same field of biology. It's that same area and have them review it. They want to make sure that you did the study right, that you used, you know, enough samples to make sure it's valid, that you whatever whatever's appropriate for the type of study it was. And they're going to review the article and make sure it's been done well. It's well written, it's well researched, etc. And then they'll send it back. There's usually a little back and forth and corrections and whatnot. And then um and then they'll say, yes, it's approved for publication or they'll say no we're not going to publish this because it's not sound research that does happen so this is the process that's referred to uh, when they someone says peer-reviewed so your again your instructor might say I want you to use scholarly sources for your paper or they might just say peer-reviewed so that's what the scholarly so scholarly source is all about For example, Psychological Bulletin is a scholarly source, Journal of Wildlife Management is a scholarly source, Science is a scholarly source. These are all different types of scholarly journals. So what criteria can we use? What do we actually, what do we look at to find out if this is going to be a good source to use or not? What is a good set of criteria? And we're going to look at aspect. Look at every aspect. And what that stands for, authority, sources, purpose, evenness, coverage, and timeliness. We're going to look at each of these individually. When you look at a source and you're trying to decide, should I use this or not, you want to look at the aspect. So let's start at the top. Authority. So you're going to want to look at what's the authority behind this. Now, something to remember occasionally, uh, reference books don't necessarily have an individual author, so maybe an editor or a publisher would be who you're going to look at as the authority on that. Uh, there's not necessarily one person who wrote that. Uh, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at what are the author's qualifications. Who's the authority? And that authority might be a, a famous publisher 
or an editor, something along those lines. But you want to find out what who who's the authority behind that. What are the qualifications? Are they an expert in this field? Is the author someone who is known in that field or has written a lot, done a lot of research in that field of study? Whatever you're doing your research on, is are they a Shakespearean expert? Yes or no? Are they well known for that? So th these are the things you want to ask yourself when you're looking at um, different sources. What's the reputation of the author or publisher? That's something that you may not find out until you go into a special a special field or a certain field when you declare a major and you're getting into more and more researching into one field. You may not start to recognize authors' names. But that's good, um, kind of harkening back to our discussion about uh, reading an, a gen, uh, an encyclopedia article about your topic. If someone's been mentioned in the encyclopedia, you may run across other references to them, or they may have written some things that you run across when you're looking for books or articles. So they would probably have a good reputation. Some publishers are, as I said, well known for publishing reputably in certain fields. So even if the author isn't, you don't know who the author is, or you're not sure about that, the publisher maybe has a good reputation in that field. So, you want to look for that. The next aspect, sources. You want to take a look at the sources of information that the authors have used. Have the sources been listed? Is there a bibliography for checking the references? You need to look you need to be able to check the author's sources. Even if you don't actually go and verify all their sources, having that documentation available shows some credibility and responsibility to the process. You want to know that they are giving credit where credit is due and citing their sources. Um, and remember back to our other presentation about the pearl growing strategy. You can use those sources to get lead yourself to new sources. So that uh, also works to your advantage there. But you want to make sure. Have they documented their sources of information? Or does it seem like they're just making everything up? Next aspect, purpose. Why was this written? What was the purpose of the publication? The intention behind the publication can affect its contents. Um, if you're looking at a website and they're trying to sell nutritional supplements. Maybe they're going to have an article that talks about how important that that vitamin is, or something like that. So, what what is their purpose there? Are they trying to sell you something, like in that example? Are they trying to entertain you? Is this just written uh, with the uh, creative license in mind, I guess, for entertainment purposes, or is it informational? Are they trying to just share information. What What's the purpose behind the publication? Who is their target audience? Sometimes you, you have to look around and see who who's the target on this. When, when you figure that out, is it general readers? Is it experts? You, you can look at the language and how something is written. Is it too basic? Or is it too technical or advanced for what you're looking for? Um, if you're doing a, uh, you know, an intro class and you're reading something that's geared, that's too technical, it's geared for other scientists in the field who already have lots of history in that and they understand all the jargon and the lingo, then that might be too advanced for you to use. Or if it's too basic, just because something is... Um, Correct information doesn't mean it's always appropriate. Maybe a children's book on a topic written for little kids is accurate and factual information. It's not misleading or or wrong, but may, but that would be inappropriate for a college level paper if you use a children's book on a topic. You need to look at that. Is is that appropriate for your use? Does it match up with what you're trying to accomplish? Evenness. You want to look for balance. Are you looking at facts or opinions? It's a good question. You want to kind of figure out, is this just this person's opinion on the topic? Or are they backing up any assertions that they're making? Are they backing those up with facts? 
have they documented it again but you know recognizing the difference there um, is this objective are they giving both sides of both sides of the story are they recognizing that there are other perspectives or does the author maybe acknowledge that they have a bias if they are writing from a certain point of view a lot of times they will state that this is my perspective and they'll tell you if they're coming from a certain area uh, just because there is a bias does not mean you can't read it you can't write, use it you need to immediately throw it away that's not what I'm saying but if it is kind of a biased treatment maybe you're looking for that maybe you want to see what's people you know what are they saying on this one side but you've got to remember evenness balance that out then if you're if you're getting a lot of things that are biased in one way balance that out with the other point of view and so even if it's not objective that doesn't mean you can't use it but you really gotta watch for balance so you want to balance that back out with something else coverage so in addition to being objective or biased then you need to look at what kind of coverage does this um, t source give to your topic how thoroughly is your topic covered is it just skimming over it is it um, really an overview something that's very superficial it's not really going to give you what you want it's not going to be supportive enough of your topic is it comprehensive enough to support your research needs is that going to is that going to be enough these are all things some of these some of these are about the quality of the source and some of it is about uh, applicable to your research so we're looking at both things here and then timeliness you don't want to use something that is too old for your for your topic is the information up to date have new discoveries or events change the accuracy of the information um, currency may not be important in some subject areas um, in the medical field absolutely you need the most recent stuff they want you to not use things that are very old you're gonna you're we want to be up to date medical in medical field is changing all the time a lot and so you want to be up to date on that history sometimes the best thing that was written about something is still 20 30 40 years old I, and that's just the best the best source that's still out there uh, but uh, even even so uh, keeping in mind that something written 50 years ago may still be the most you know the most thorough coverage of the war of 1812 that might still be appropriate but things sometimes change events happen for example um, once the the Iron Curtain came down we had lots more access in the West to um, information out of uh, the Soviet Union and some things documentation there's been a lot more research that's come out from that area from Eastern Europe and Russia that that we just didn't have access to for a lot of years they'd closed that off and so things that were published during that time period when that was people didn't have access to that might not be as accurate as they used to be um, scientific information a few years ago Pluto was declassified it's no longer a planet so if you have science books or uh, books about the stars that say Pluto is a planet those things have changed that's not accurate anymore so you want to use a little bit of common sense and also um, you know see what has changed that may have affected the timeliness of the information just because it's old doesn't mean it is not good but you want to make sure it's still appropriate so when you're evaluating resources you want to look at every aspect of the source and make sure it's appropriate both as a, a quality source and appropriate to your research